Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So episode 199, who'd have thunk it? We are one off from the big 200 and the time has absolutely flown by. Um, so what we've been doing inside of the uh, FMM community is running a challenge for our members to write a new piece of intro music. And it's long overdue uh, that I do an update anyway, because uh, we're now at over 500,000 downloads for the podcast. So a huge thank you um, if you are a regular listener and a welcome if this is your, your first ever podcast with us. So the actual uh, voice of me at the beginning welcoming you all dramatically, all of that good stuff needs an update. And we updated the music um for episode 100 and we thought well let's make a thing of this episode 200 so um, I'm excited to check out what the guys and girls in the community have made and uh, pick a new track and we'll get that edited and we'll get that built into the uh, into the new intro so you'll have that coming with episode number 200 um, and then this episode well we're going a bit wacky with this one so hang on in there we're going to be talking uh, about getting into a creative headspace for writing your work, but it's going to be a real out there kind of way of doing it. So you might have already uh, encountered a number of different ways. I'm sure um, even if you haven't, you've certainly heard of uh, this idea of being able to get into the right headspace for being creative. And some things that, you know, come up that may be common for you, are, you know, having a tidy, organized way of working, perhaps DAW uh, templates, things about routines. Sometimes people have uh, pre-creativity routines, if you like, and mantras and different things that they use. I and mean, certainly it's something that um, I go deep into inside of my signature program, Finish More Music, because being having the right attitude and the right uh, mindset to approach creativity has a huge impact on the likelihood that you're going to have a session that you find productive. Let's just put it that way, where you you really get to channel your creativity. Um, it's so easy to go into the studio, and this isn't about whether you're having a, a good day or you know feeling in a bit of a mood. You can write music in kind of any sort of mood space whatsoever. However, there are certain ways of thinking, you know, perfectionism is an obvious one that will really grind you down and make it very difficult to find any kind of um, flow when you're in the studio. Now, what we're going to talk about is kind of outside of these things. Um, and it's a bit of a wacky one. It's something that you may never have even considered. And at first, when I say this, you might think, my God, he's lost his mind. He's a bit bonkers. Um, what's going on? And skepticism is healthy, right? It's healthy to think things through. You know, I, I love this uh, phrase, don't be a follower, be a student. That's to say, take information in what resonates with you, what connects with your frames of reference, with your experience, with what you've learned so far. And so skepticism is, is very healthy rather than just taking things in and going, oh, well, he said, she said, therefore I'll do. Um, you know, we, we could get pulled from pillar to post doing that. Certain things won't resonate with us as human beings. All of that being said, what I am going to uh, invite you to do for the remainder of this podcast is just shelve your skepticism until the end and then bring the healthy dose in. But just hear this one out because it's a bit odd what we're going to talk about. But literally from top to bottom, um, from performers and actors to CEOs to top athletes, many of them tap into this skill and this way of getting themselves into the right mindset in order to perform. So what are we going to be talking about? It's called having an alter ego. Some people actually have more than one and an alter ego is a developed persona that allows you to be someone different from your everyday self. So in this case, we'd be talking about a best version of yourself for the given task at hand, which would be being a creative. And this plays off of the idea that you've no doubt heard me um, talking about on the podcast, which is becoming the person you want to be right now showing up as that person in order to get the results that you want later. So that's to say that a lot of people live their lives from a place of circumstance. When this thing happens, then 
I'm going to start doing the things that a person who's got that would do and I'll start behaving in that way. So like when I'm a, you know, I, I go full time with my music and I become a pro, like then I won't procrastinate in the studio. Like I'll, I'll be really regimented. I'll be, I'll get stuff done and I'll be really disciplined and committed. That will be the person that I'll be. But that is completely back to front. It's essential to be the person who does the things to get the results that we want. That must logically make sense to anybody, right? If I'm just kicking around hoping that success is going to fall out of the sky, I'm, I'm going to be waiting a long time. Of course I am. Like the perfect conditions never exist. And, you know, maybe you can relate to this the number of times you go, oh, well, next year I'm not going to be so busy and everything's... Of course, there's more things. If we don't design our life, somebody else is going to design it for us. And that starts with us saying, OK, I'm not waiting for circumstances. I'm going to show up as a pro would show up now if that's what you want to achieve. Or I'm going to show up in a way that the person who gets the results that I want would show up now. Because if you take that person and you drop them into your seats, you take a, you know, a top music producer right now and you say, boom, stick them into your seat with the same contacts you have, the same equipment you have, the same environment you have, how long would it take them to get the results you want? Not long because of the way they think, the knowledge that they've acquired, um, their attitude, all of those things is that of a person who gets the results that you want. So when it comes to the alter ego, it's saying, well, let's change the persona. Let's look at the things about me as a person that aren't fitting at the moment and design a persona of a person that I can step into that that individual, let's say, when I come into the studio before I start and operate from a place of being them because they're the people who get results. So I know, a bit wacky, like, whoa, hang on. Bear with me, please, just bear with me, okay? <laughs> so let me give you, give you um, some thoughts on this. Let's say at the moment you are someone who you're really nervous of being judged. Now, as a creative, if you want to get your music out in the world, you will be judged. I mean, right now, you are judging me in some way, shape or form. What I'm saying, maybe you've got an image of, of you know, where I am, what's going on. If you're listening to this and you're out about, out and about, uh, maybe just then stumbled over my words a little bit. Maybe there's a little bit of judgment in there. Maybe not. But you consistently were judging people and you're going to be judged. And when you put your creativity out there, you're going to be judged for sure. But if you're really nervous about that and that's holding you up massively, would it or would it not be of a benefit to you to show up in the studio as someone who's got a bit of bravado about them? You know, a bit of these things bounce off of me. Because imagine a person who does show up. Imagine if you were you, but you had that bravado and you're like, I don't care. I really don't give a damn what people say about me. Imagine what you'd get done then. And we use this sort of example of uh, perfectionism. Like imagine if you were a, a version of you that said good is good enough. Done is done. I'm going to stop tweaking and messing about. Let's get this thing out the door. Or if you're someone at the moment who knows that you don't stand up for what you believe in and what you want your life to be. And actually, you've got family members, uh, other people around you, potentially, who think that you should live your life in a certain way. And you're conforming to that instead of doing the thing that feeds your soul, what you really feel you were put on this planet to do. Well, again, imagine being someone who stood up for himself and said no, respectfully, of course. You know, I'm sure that would be the person that you would design for yourself, right? Not, I'm not suggesting for a second your persona needs to be a, an arrogant arsehole, but that is your choice. If you want to go down that road, totally your choice. There isn't a right or a wrong here. Um, but, it, you know, respectfully standing up for yourself and saying, no, this is what I'm doing and this is what I want to do in my life and having that characteristic. So this is an opportunity to design a person for yourself, a persona, sorry, for yourself that you step into in certain circumstances in your life. And I'll talk about some kind of hints and tips and ways that you can go about doing this. Um, but in case you're thinking this is this really is, you know, batshit crazy, let's let's say it as it is. 
Here's something interesting for you. More than 80% of all singers and performers use a stage name and present a different persona in their work life. Now that data seems insane to me, but my team presented it to me and I'm like, okay, if that's the data, that's the data. But when you then start digging into it, I said, well, what are some examples of this? My gosh, there are loads. So even if that percentage turned out to be, you know, a little bit different, don't know what exactly what the data set is that, that they went for. Think about these for a few names. Beyonce. So she created an alter personality called Sasha Fierce to help boost her self-confidence. Quote from her, I have someone else that takes over when it's time for me to work and when I'm on stage. This alter ego that I've created kind of protects me and who I really am. Beyonce. Adele. I mean, these are like mega stars, right? So she created her own alter ego called Sasha Carter, and that was using Beyonce uh, as an inspiration. And she said she was about to meet Beyonce and said, what would Sasha Fierce do? And that's when Sasha Carter was born. And then Paul McCartney. And these are the huge, biggest names you can get, right? He took on an alter ego of the fireman as a way to escape musical expectations, he said. And that's the whole point about the fireman. It's very free. So that's to say that, you know, if you're Paul McCartney and you go into the studio to write something, it's easy to carry the baggage of, oh, my God, I've got to live up to Paul McCartney. And you could see how that could strangle your creativity, right? So he created an alter ego, the fireman. And then he said the whole idea behind Sergeant Peppers was to create a band and we could pretend that we were that band and not the Beatles so that we made that record with this in mind. So it's very free. It's a very joyful way to record. And sometimes it can be pretty scary, but that's OK. And it's very quick. And I enjoyed the process because it's exhilarating. So some big names. Now, if you do a bit of research, you're going to find out actors do this, sports people, boxers, MMA, mixed martial arts people. They have alter egos of being unbeatable winners. And if you ever watch any of those sports, it might strike you that sometimes you watch in the build up to these things. These men and women, they're scary. They can be terrifying. And like you see the look on their face before the bell goes and then they come out swinging and they are aggressive and they go for it. And then the second the fight is over, they're the nicest people you could ever want to meet in your life. Like, really, you know, some of them are very, very gentle human beings. They go and they, you know, pick up the person who maybe they've just knocked them, knocked them out, knocked them to the ground. They're there. It's all hugs. It's all friendship. Even some of them are on the, the losing side. They're down, but they do the same thing. I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of them do. They turn a switch on in their head to become a different person when it's fight time. Top CEOs do it, business owners, a guy um, who actually um, I worked with for a while, a guy called Todd Herman, he does it. And he actually wrote a book on this called The Alter Ego Effect. This is where I first uh, came across it. And he's a guy who wears like a, a really sharp blue suit um, and glasses and he has his hair a certain way. And he does that when he's going into business mode and then outside of that he's a different kind of person he's like as his, his work life and then his normal life and you may be familiar with this idea of sort of what was called the power suit which was a a way that sort of top business people would dress very sharp suits often expensive suits that almost demand the respect they carry an authority with them um, and this power inside of a corporate setting and this has actually been studied as well. So scientists call the phenomena enclosed cognition. And that's to say that your style and the clothes you choose reflect and affect your mood, health and overall confidence. And so there's a cool bit of research that was done where uh, researchers had subjects perform tests whilst wearing a lab coat like a medical doctor would wear. Um, and another group would wear a coat like painters wear. And then another group uh, not wearing either coat. And they found that subjects sustained attention increased while wearing the doctor's coats in a way that their attention did not increase whilst wearing the painter's, painter's coats or no coats at all. Crazy stuff. But a ton of research has been done into this. And it turns out that, yes, 
the way that you dress and the way you carry yourself and your body and, you know, standing up straight. Um, it's Tony Robbins, I think, does a lot of this stuff as well about how you are physically. If you're feeling down and you're all slouched and you're all, you know, uh, all worries me and feeling like a victim in life. And if you stand up and I think he calls it a power pose, actually. Like you stand up and you breathe in and you put your chest up and it all starts there, this idea of physiology. Um, and I actually, it's just kind of come to my mind as well. Um, I remember when I was working in corporate that one of the things that was a big change for me was this kind of attitude shift, which was to say that what I did as a headhunter is very kind of sales heavy. Basically, you're, it sounds dreadful when I put it like this, but you're selling people to people, right? You're saying, hey, here's this candidate for the job. And you're saying, hey, this is the, the job for you. And then the, the partners of the firm, uh, which was what I operated in that space, um, sort of accountancy tax sort of area, um, the partners of this firm, like, get there, are they interested in the candidate? And you're ultimately selling people to people. Now, the th the soon as I say that, you might have had something inside of you. Again, go back to this judgment thing, like, whoa, blah, what a terrible thing to do, selling. Because selling has got such a bad uh, kind of rap. People, people think of like pushy people and like trying to get people to do things that they don't want to do. And one of the things that happened really early on and made a big difference for me uh, was a piece of training that was uh, done at the company I worked for. And they reframed us from being salespeople to problem solvers. So we would go into meetings as problem solvers. And that's exactly what would happen. Like person A really wants a new job. <laughs> You know, ultimately, you're trying to find them the job they want and make sure that it's the job that is going to tick all the boxes for them in their lifestyle. And of course, there are dodgy people who operate in these areas. You try and shoehorn people into the wrong jobs and all of that stuff. Um, and I can do a, talk about this massively, but I was, you know, really successful in the, in the business that I was in by not doing that because long term relationships count for everything. And it, that and it goes against everything that I stand for. I mean, this is somebody's life. Force them into a job, a brand new job that doesn't fit for them. My God, I, I think that's just an abhorrent thing to do. But nevertheless, you could go into a pitch and think, well, God, salesman, everyone thinks I'm dodgy. But you go in as a problem solver. Like, OK, you need to recruit this team or these people. OK, I can help. Let's go. What's the problem? Who are you looking for? What do you want? I'm going to find these people for you. And who doesn't want to pay someone to take their problems away? It's often a lot more expensive when you're in business to try and figure stuff out yourself than to get an expert in to get it fixed quickly and get you the right person. So that was huge as well. Just that mindset shift was massive to walk into, into meetings and pitches as the problem solver and not as the salesman. So... Whether or not that has convinced you as to the fact that, you know, the science backs it, people across all industries, sports people, you know, we pick some top, top um, musicians and performers and stars um, to share what they've said as well. It's a thing. It works. It might not be for you. It might be saying, oh, I don't know about that. But consider this. If it was something where you go, oh, I don't know about that. I'm not going to take that on. Well, maybe inventing a persona of someone who would take something like this on could be a real, real boost for you as a creative in your studio. So whatever the weather, um, these are some steps that, that came up or at least some um, some tips and tricks if you do want to try this on for yourself. Maybe you can go all in on this, want to go like totally, totally big change or maybe it's just a version of you that has a few tweaks and alterations. Um, the first thing to say is that creating it, it is itself uh, supposed to be fun and what I said, creating a creative process. So just like actors get into character sometimes, right? You get to dive into your alter ego psyche. You get to create this person that you are going to step into, that you're going to become. And as a creative, that's quite an exhilarating and, and fun idea, I think, to play with. Now, it's good to have a, a clear idea of the end goal. That's to say what you want to accomplish, whether it's being someone who's confident, you're overcoming some other fear that we talked about. Maybe someone is beating procrastination. Maybe it's like a go-getter. We all know these people, right? <laughs> you're like, 
they just don't seem to procrastinate on anything. It's like, there's a thing to be done. They're on it, doing it. They just go through this list. Boom, 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 done. Maybe you find that you procrastinate to such a degree that it's crippling you in all different areas of your life. It's not, again, it's not a bad thing to procrastinate. There's a usefulness for that in terms of the way that we're thinking. But if it's just dragging you down on everything that you want to achieve, maybe that would be a goal to be creating a version of you who gets stuff done. Get in the studio, sit down, turn this person on, boom, away we go. So then what qualities does your alter ego need to possess to achieve the goals that you want and their goals? Could be joint goals, right? Um, And how do these attributes translate into their physical appearance? So this we talked about this idea of the the power suit and and literally we're not talking about power rangers here. We're talking about a business suit, right? Um, But I mean, again, another example has just come to my mind. When I left corporate, and I started out doing my, my own business and I started out uh, doing my own music production, I would get up every morning and I would get dressed smart, not in my suit, but smart. And I would go for a walk as though I was walking to work. I would put myself in that spot because it's so easy. It's this really seductive thing. Oh, well, you know, I'm well, again, back to that. When I, when I do this, then that will happen. This idea that magically not working anymore all of a sudden turns you into a, a professional person, uh, whether it's running your own business or doing music, is just a complete nonsense. It really, really is. We have to be the person who's going to get the results. And so I set myself up for that to start with because I didn't want to just become a bit of a bum, which would be easy to do. Get up when I want to get up, <laughs> start when I want to start. No, not really. Not conducive to uh, certainly the version of success that I was pursuing. Um, then there's obviously your space as well from an environmental perspective. Like, what do you want that to, to look like? Um, do you want to change your name? Do you want a mantra or a catchphrase? Some people have that as well. So there's a, a psychological uh, NLP idea around this called an anchor which is to say that it could be a body movement or a particular catchphrase but something that snaps you your psyche across into uh, this new version of you Um, and so you can get all of these different things and like scribble it out and have fun with this and try it on see does it work for you or not you know when would my alter ego come into play and what would they do in this Uh, environment in this situation so that's the idea as I said it may seem a bit wacky it may be that you're like yeah no totally I do that all the time I do a version of that but to a lot of people that almost kind of make-believe thing seems like it's it's crazy but there are so many examples of people sports people who the second they go on the field of play there's a switch in them. They just become somebody else that has got all of that confidence and bravado and all of the things that they don't have in their day-to-day life. And they don't want a lot of the times. They don't desire to be this, you know, super aggressive sports person when they're around their family. But they get to turn that switch on and, and be that individual when it comes to being on the field of play. So who might you need to be or who could you be? Not a fan of that word need. Who could you be on the field of play that is your creativity and your music that would help you to get more of the results that you really want to get? I think it's an interesting question to play with. And I'd love to hear from you um, and your thoughts on this. Do you think it's completely wacky, bonkers what you're talking about? Something that you absolutely could lean into? And what I think would be a lot of fun is what would be one uh, characteristic that you feel that if you possessed that, if you could create an alter ego and if this worked for you and you stepped into that alter ego, what characteristic would you most desire? Hit me up on Instagram at I am Keith Mills. I'm really, really excited to to hear from you on this one. Um, Show notes, finishmoremusic.com forward slash. You've got to know this number by now. It's 199. And um, yeah, the big 200 next time. So until then, do take care and happy music making. (laughs) 